Let me break in the comedy hour and let me say to people watching us around the world, this is Donald Trump's hometown. But the hometown folk do not behave like Donald Trump. Look tonight at thousands upon thousands of us of different religions, different races, different sexual orientations, different genders that stand together saying that we may have seen you win an election, but we have not lost our minds. We come together in the town Donald Trump was born to say that we don't need to make America great. America is great when we respect each other and stand with each other and unite with each other and defend each other's rights and stop the harassment and oppression of each other. You might have missed it, Donald, but America's already been great and we gonna make it even greater. Tomorrow, as the mayor has said who's leading us tonight, President Barack Obama will leave the White House. But we are going to make sure that health care doesn't leave with him, that LGBT rights doesn't leave with him, that rights of criminal justice reform doesn't leave with him that rights of blacks and rights of Latinos and rights of immigrants and gender rights doesn't leave with him. Nobody donated us those rights. We fought for those rights and we're going to keep those rights because we're going to keep on fighting. You want to register? You want to build walls? This is a country that does not make that happen, and we will not sit by and let it happen again. It amazes me that Mr. Trump got upset when someone said that they didn't respect him as a legitimate president after he campaigned for years calling President Obama not a legitimate American. Your politics started by trying to delegitimize the sitting president's nationality. And now you want to have a temper tantrum when people talk about voters were purged and there was, according to intelligence, influence from other nations. As you sit there tonight, at the inaugural concert in Lincoln Memorial. You need to talk to President Lincoln, Mr. Trump. President Lincoln will tell you that slavery and oppression based on different races and different people is wrong. You need to talk to Lincoln while you're there tonight. And Lincoln will tell you that states' rights, whether it's on health care, on teachers, on education is wrong. You need to talk to Mr. Lincoln tonight. There's some battles we won and you can't reverse those battles. We're sending you a message from your hometown that you can try to turn back the clock, but you won't turn back time. We are not going backwards. Tomorrow at high noon, Donald Trump is scheduled to put his hand on a Bible and be sworn in the 45th president. Well, I hope he opens that Bible and reads the Bible. Go to the New Testament. There's a story that I'll tell you as a Baptist preacher where Jesus talked about a man who was laying by the side of the road. He'd been wounded, he'd been robbed, and he laid there in desperate conditions. A man of his race walked by, looked at him and kept walking. Another one walked by 
that was of religious standing. He looked at him and kept walking. But another man came by and he reached and helped him. He didn't ask him what his race was. He didn't ask him what his gender was. He didn't ask him if he was transsexual. He didn't ask him where nation he was born in. He helped him. What makes a good Samaritan, Mr. Trump, and a good American is when we lift each other up rather than beat each other down. We come to lift the nation up tonight. So we say, they're saying that there was hackers that hacked all over the country during the election. Well, I made it easy. I brought my smartphone. Hack this tonight. We gonna love, not hate. Hack this tonight. We gonna stand united, not divided. Hack this tonight. There'll be a hundred days of resistance. Hack this tonight. Voter rights won't stop. LGBT rights won't stop. We will not stop. We will not go back. You can hack a message and tell the world that the election is over, but the movement has just begun. <laughs>